but I was, you know, I, I did realize that I'm kind of at the bottom and nothing's getting better. We decided to close all of our restaurants. From Rise High, this is Why Not Me, a show about Kama'aina creators, entrepreneurs, and community leaders. The behind the scenes stories of how they got to where they are and the valuable lessons they learned along the way. I'm your host, Gabe Ame, and this week we get to chat with the boisterous and lovable chef Mark Noguchi, better known as Gooch. Gooch opens up about the time he hit rock bottom, both professionally and personally, but how this moment helped reinvent himself from the typical chef running and owning a restaurant to one that can be a better service to his community. All right, I want to welcome to the show Mr. Chef Mark Noguchi, better known as Gooch. What's up, brother? What's up, gang? Uh, how's it? Aloha! Yeah. Mahalo for having. Right on. Uh, well, yeah. thanks for thanks for joining us. And um, you know, just kind of was thinking about about the first time, um, maybe I met you. Uh, I was remember my good friend of mine, uh, Emata from Tahiti. Right? He used to work with yeah, yeah, yeah. Chef, chef Ed at Town. He was telling me, "You got to meet this guy." And so I remember asking him out of, "Oh yeah, you know this guy Gooch and stuff." He's oh, that's the naked chef. Isn't that the naked yeah. chef? So wait, we gotta we gotta start off with that. What, what, how did you get the moniker oh, Naked okay, Chef? Okay, hold on. I thought that it would be funny as my Christmas card to take a picture just in an apron. One day, I set up my camera and I just took a picture of me cooking in an apron, and it was just you yeah. can see like the little bit of my ass, and that's it. That's my Christmas card. And Chef Mark, he's like the next day, he's like, "Hey, Gooch, come, come, I like to talk to you." And and a chef only comes calls you into the office if he's going to chew you out. If it's anything else, he'll come to you and talk to you. So he goes to his office. He goes, hey, I, I like that Christmas card. I like, oh, thanks. He goes, looks like you got a lot of time on your hands. Like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> I was working, uh, yeah, I, was, I think I was working doubles for like the next month. You're very well known. I mean, you know, if you, you go go to your, your Instagram and, and we're going to put it up right here and you know, you, you got a pretty, you got a pretty good following, but for a good reason, you've been, you've been chefing up here in Hawaii for a long, long time. Um, many it's restaurants, 20 years, 20 years many 20 restaurants years. You, you've, you've opened and started and just to name a few, you've got taste. Um, and you've got mission house, right? Kauai, Kauai church, Kauai Hau church. Um, mission was really hard because you know, for for those of you that remember the kitchen, you could you could pretty much stick your arms out and touch all four walls of the kitchen. It was that small. Oh, wow. It was probably like a hundred, if not a little bit less. It was small. You know, for me, definitely, mission was the most emotionally tied. It was the most I've ever been emotionally tied to a restaurant. Probably second to like Hey Appear. Mission House, because we had a little bit more understanding of what to do. We, I had the ability to really, really take in and, and, and embrace and appreciate the community that came to eat. You know, you'd see, you would see our Kuei friends come down from Kauai Hall Plaza and just be like, hey, just want to let you know, we've never stepped foot on Mission House Museum until now. You know, mm -hmm. you know, Mayor Caldwell would come by after running, he'd eat lunch. And even yeah. he was like, you know, Gooch, this is my little safe zone. It was like this yeah. neutral zone, you know, where... Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you could have a senator with a lobbyist on another table. Nobody would bug each other. It was just... Yeah, yeah. Um, but I don't know how much you're willing to share, but I mean, there's obviously there was success with Mission, um, Mission, Mission House, but also there was a lear big learning experience, right? And again, big learning experience. Um, so, so I don't know if you want to... How much Sure, you yeah, I'm happy yeah, to share. Yeah. Um, you know, we were, we were past the one-year mark. And we're looking at it, we're kind of projecting, okay, you know, if, if we keep going at this, and then we had made a few requests for Mission House, one of them installing air conditioning. On the side of the Mission House Museum, I think what it was was that the people that were making the, the financial decisions, you know, were researchers and, and, and archaeologists and scientists. And mm -hmm. that's great, they're brilliant people, but they're not business people either. Yeah. So my, our general manager, we actually made this, we actually made a graph. We showed here's where we are, here's where we can be next year, because what they wanted to do was double the rent. I said, like we can't, we're gonna sink in like four months. Yeah. 
Yeah. And for some reason, they just went in budge, and basically it came down to they're like, you guys are busy. We see a line out the door every day. You know, they're like, you guys are holding out on us. Mm. So that sort of made the decision that we, we, you know, we had to close because better to close while you're up on top than try and fight it out, right? So yeah, I was pretty, um, I was actually real bitter about that. I was real bitter towards them. Um, I try not to be bitter at anybody, but that one was a hard one to let go. And then um, kind of got a bomb dropped on me was my mother had been calling for about a month and she had been saying, hey, uh, can you come up to the house? I got to talk to you. Mm-hmm. And, you know, we were so busy that I was, I was, you know, checking in on mom once every two weeks. Yeah. And she, well, finally, she was like, I really need to talk to you. Can you come up to the house? I came up to the house. And I didn't, we didn't even like sit down in the, in the living room. You know, we kind of sat down by the door. Mom has these chairs by the door. And she's like, I got to tell you something. And then I knew, I knew what she was going to tell me. I'm like, you're sick. So she got diagnosed with stage four pancreatic cancer. Doctors gave her, you know, they didn't think she was going to make it through the year. So we had like maybe eight weeks, 12 weeks. And we were so freaking busy. And we were rolling into Christmas season. I just started to get real mad, you know, and I took it out on everybody. I took it out on, on my, my staff. I took it on my wife. I took it out on my kids. I was just always angry. 2016, I think, you know, the, uh, the, I was, we we're worried, you know, we we're worried. I was worried about my marriage and our job. I lost a bunch of employees that year and they were just like, chef, like, I love you, yeah. but I just don't know what's going on with you right now, you know? Mm-hmm. And that just got me more mad. So yeah, yeah. I started going to therapy and, we decided to close all of our restaurants. But I was, you know, I, I did realize that I'm kind of at the bottom and nothing's getting better. So why not make a huge change? So Matt and I had this long conversation, you know, talked to my therapist about it too. We, and then we said we're going to move straight to catering and just do catering. You know, in this whole time of being busy and then now mom getting cancer, yeah. we had still been doing a few things a little bit different. As a rest, as a as a restaurant group, um, we had uh, we had industry work days, and it started at Hey Up Here, mm-hmm. and every other month we would close on a Monday, and take our entire staff to work on one of the farms within Hey Yeah. Then people started asking, Hey, could you take this? Could you take your network of people and come and work on all these different farms? So I think after the second or third year, Amanda and I had this talk about like what if we take this group and we go all over the island? And I thought that that was a cool idea because it was a great hardworking group. But, you know, if you're trying to effect change, you know, how effective are you if you're spreading yourself out? You know, if, you, if you're working all over the island, one here, one there, one there. Yeah. What I wanted was I wanted this enduring, you know, work group that kept coming back month after month or year after year and then got to see the rehabilitation and the, and the, and the, you know, the revitalization of Hei So we made the choice to just stay within Hei yeah. For me, Gabe, that's my love, is our Aina, is being mm. outside. Again, I'm a chef, and how do you, how do you define success as a chef? Well, you got to open up more restaurants. Right. And for right. some reason, that was just the, that, it just didn't, it didn't work. You know, there's something, my, my Ano, I just, it just felt differently. Um, you know, when we decided to close, I remember there's a lot of shame that I felt. I was buying into, you know, what, what, what little r- murmurings and rumblings. People like, oh, what? Were you, were, you, were you tired already? I think that the conflict lies in that what you want to do and what you're supposed to do, right? Or what we mm-hmm. think we're supposed to do. Yeah. Yet, I don't know when I kind of realized it. It was somewhere along that journey. Every, everything else in our world is changing, evolving moving, progressing. Yet in our profession, you know, we still order our produce. Most of us still order our produce with a phone call. Yep. You know, you call and you, I need this, this, and this. Why should four walls and magazine covers be... Define you. Our, define us as success. Yeah. So I think mom getting sick and, and, and those little things that happened along the way catalyzed, mm. you know, the whole like effort. Why not? Yeah. You know? this point what you got to lose and so all this stuff where you you know you know mom getting sick restaurants closing down you know you have to kind of rethink what are you going to do what's going to make you happy and at this time you get a call from 
Puna Hall School, right? Your alma mater. It was, it wasn't so, it was, it wasn't a phone call from them. What it was was that for a few years now, I had been speaking to like, to, S, to a couple of their programs, SGLI, um, you know, some of the AP classes, especially like uh, environmental science. Uh, was real fortunate there were some teachers who loved food and took a chance and asked me to come and speak. And after one night, it was an entrepreneurial conference. Uh, Emily McCarran came up, the principal, mm-hmm. and she was like, Gooch, mm-hmm. you know, you do really well with, um, you do really well with students. And she said, you're mm. such a great speaker. Did you ever think about being a teacher? And I was like, nope. <laughs> and she just chuckled. And she said, I said, uh, yeah, there's no way that, you know, there's no way that I could do it. I said, I would, I would get fired from, from public schools. And she said, no, no, I wasn't thinking about public schools. I was thinking about Punahou. And I was like, oh, like, well, you don't know my history at Punahou. And she's like, no, 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 we, we know your history. And she was like, I think you're dynamic, you know, if anything, ever. and I told her, you know, it was at that time too, where, you know, I was, I was still trying to figure, figure out process, mom being sick. I was an emotional wreck. And I said, Emily, I said, there's no way that I could even begin to wrap my head around what it would look like to be a puno. And she's so smooth. She was like, well, if you ever change your mind, let me know. Mm. So, then you, so I fast forward now, trying to figure out what's next, you know, and one night Amanda was like, Babe, have you, have you talked to Puno recently? I'm like, no. She's like, why not? And I was like, hmm. Okay. That's, what you, that's, well, that's yeah, your that's wife adding wife, value right there. Yeah. Oh, uh, so, you know, sent, sent an email, got a response back the next day. And Emily mm-hmm. was just like, yeah, I've been waiting for this. Mm-hmm. And over a plate of uh, mapo tofu and boiled dumplings, it was, she was like, what do you want to do? And I'm like, I don't know. What do you want me to do? She goes, no, no, no. If you had, if you could do anything you wanted to put on, what would it be? I said, well, I'm like, I want to be a campus resource. I don't want to work just academy. I said, I think that, you know, the youngest times of a, of a Keiki's life are the, are the most, um, in, you know, influential, you know, you have the, the most amount of, uh, of, of synergistic response. I said, and to be honest, I said, I'm not a, you know, I'm not a professional teacher. You know, I can be a resource, but I don't know how to put together these lesson plans or how to forecast for a year. She goes, no, 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 no. She Mm. goes, we know that's not your strength. We want you to come to Punahou and be you. We want Mm. you to do you here. Six months later, I, on August 14th, I stepped onto campus. So, Um, so you, you became the food and sustainability curriculum specialist so, tell specialist. Me, so what what is that's that's big time so what what do you <laughs> <laughs> so tell well, give us an example of what kind of resource are you at put on right now so i help students and teachers to yeah. incorporate food or like aina based learning uh you know within their within their class already uh but i think one of my my favorite projects that i do is with ulu mm-hmm. where ulu is on campus you know there's there's some beautiful ulu trees up top by kindergarten, there's some down by middle school. Our, I want our Hamana to see Ulu from the time they start Puno to the time they walk away in various forms. And a real basic way to sort of bring all the grades together and have this cross campus sort of interaction with Ulu is up at kindergarten, there's two gorgeous Ulu trees. When Ulu season is around, you know, I go up, um, I kind of MacGyver this contraption with a, with a toilet plunger attached to an extendable mango picker and Mm -hmm. the kids help me harvest ulu students that have the time will process the ulu will peel it steam it freeze it and get it set and then we can use that ulu for you know uh, for ulu demos for like third grade luau or we can utilize ulu for an an academy project Mm -hmm. and then that's sort of way that you know students continue to see ulu we're we're at the part of the show where Got a little flashback of one of your Instagram pics you posted, <laughs> right? And so I want you a little, little story behind it. I see a couple, I see a couple, a couple guys I know. So why don't you, why don't you share this? So this is, uh, this was, I believe, the second year. Yep, mm-hmm. second year of Hanaku. We and we wrapped it up. What, what is that? Uh, so, Hanaku. So Hanaku happens in Hanamaui, mm-hmm. and that place you see in your bottom left corner, Alukukui. Mm-hmm. And Ala Kukui is run by Kaui Kanaka Ole. Yeah. Um, Kaui's Ohana is the, the family that I danced for. 
that uh, the young looking ding dong in your upper right hand corner is Kuha Ozain. <laughs> one of my dearest friends. Yeah. Um, you can't see, I think that's Isaac next to Kuhao and then yeah. Sheldon on the other side. Chef and Sheldon, then, right? Yeah. And so a few of us um, got in on this idea. Kaui and Kuhao kind of born the idea of finding a way how to celebrate uh, the men of Hana. Now, yes, you know, everyone, you know, everyone should be celebrated, but Kaui, Kaui, um, was specific on the men of Hana because mm. and she's she's Hana, female, yeah, right. And mm -hmm. Hana men have all this 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 knowledge, this Aina based knowledge, hunting, fishing, right? How you lay net properly, how you understand how the moon cycle works, when you go, when you don't go. Yet for them, it's just a way of life. It's just what they do. Mm. Kaui wanted to find a way to celebrate these men. And, 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 and kind of show them just how valuable their ancient mm -hmm. knowledge is pertaining mm -hmm. to a present day world. Mm -hmm. And for her, it's like, why don't we bring together food? Why don't we bring together, you know, chefs? And that's how Hanaku was born. So what Hanaku does is that uh, we select uh, two to three new chefs every year. We okay. want these chefs to be Aina and community focused. We just hang out for the weekend. We cook together, we, we, you know, they, every family, whatever their specialty is, whether it is kill cow or, or lay net, you know, that's what, um, that's what they show all these chefs. Yeah. And it is just an unfiltered look at old life. Fortunately with COVID this year, this year I had to skip, right? Cause right around this time is when you guys would be doing it, right? Right. In fact, I think, I, I think there's a, yeah, there's a, there's a couple people posting today. I miss, I wish we were at Hanaku. Oh yeah, I wish so too. Yeah. Um, okay. Last part of the show, right? We're mm. gonna go speed speed round questions. Speed round. First, first the question I ask, first thing pops in your head, just put it out there, right? You ready? Yeah. Something that makes you laugh. My girls. Favorite snack. Ooh, chicharrones or boiled peanuts. Last movie you watched. Trolls World Tour. <laughs> I know you got kids. A moment from your career that stands out. Yeah. So growing up, um, every almost every Sunday we would have shabu shabu, you know, Japanese yeah, yeah, yeah. hot pot. And at the end of at the end of dinner, my father would always make either udon or zosui, that rice mm. that rice dish. When I started cooking, then all of a sudden my dad started to um, ask me to do it, mm. and every time I did it. I hated cooking for him because it would always suck. It would always be wrong. And the way my father would tell you he was doing wrong is he would dip his hashi in the boiling water and flick it at you. And that's how you Very know. Cool. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. Never made, I never made my dad happy yeah. up until about five years ago. Mm. And one night, um, one night dad was, tell you what, it was like a Friday. He goes, tell you Sunday, come back up for dinner. And he goes, you make zosui and I'll make zosui and we'll taste it. So that Sunday when, when a man and I got up to the house with the, with the girls, there's two burners, you know, on the countertop. And so we have regular dinner and then we got to make it. And, and my dad doesn't measure anything, right? It's like he pours the salt. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. So we may make it. And then I'm real stoked because Amanda took pictures of the entire thing. And we trade bowls. My father takes a bite and he goes, nah, not bad. <laughs> and I couldn't Best help it. Best compliment you ever got, huh? I freaking burst into tears. You know, and um, and uh, that was that. That is that by far is you know, even though it wasn't in my restaurant, I think in the course of my career, has that's gotta be, it's gotta be top three. Okay, best piece of advice for any local boy or girl um, who maybe just graduated high school, college, and they're trying to figure it out in the world. You know, especially if they want to live in Hawaii and create create their own Hana in Hawaii. What kind of advice would you give them? Don't quit. Don't, don't freaking quit. And I'm, I mean, don't quit is not like you're miserable and you got to stick it through, but like, like out of everyone that you're going to see in these series of videos, mm -hmm. I think the one common denominator that all of us will have is perseverance and grit. Mm -hmm. You know, you got to see it through the hard times. You know, those are, those will be your greatest moments of growth. 
And especially if you want to make Hawaii your home, you're going to need perseverance and grit. So don't quit. And I think one of the greatest, one of the greatest gifts that we are bestowed as adults, hopefully we all get it, mm. is coming to the realization of who you are and what you're put on the earth for. Mm. So I know my heart and soul that I was put on earth to be of service. You know, I, and that's why, that's why I realized now that I could never be, you know, a chef of an empire of restaurants. I do believe that things happen for a reason. And I, I, I guess the closing thought that I wanted to share was that, you know, I believe that my mother died to save her life mm. because if she hadn't gotten sick and we had kept on going with our restaurants. There was no, there's no way that we would have been able to do this, this chef who we were during these times of COVID. Yeah. <laughs> Cause I would have been too busy worrying about my employees and ourselves. Um, so I thank mom every day and I understand better now, you know, and, and I'm real glad we got to do the work we did. Yeah. Get to do it. People like you, Gabe. Hey, well, chef Gooch, you know what? You are a terrific chef you make ono ono food but you know what you're even a better servant to the community and that says a lot so appreciate it brother oh, love you brother yeah, appreciate love it thanks, thanks, for, thanks for listening